So today I discovered a classic that I found quite impressive. Hello fellow bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today I got this great, awesome book, Anne of the Green Gables, by L.M. Montgomery herself, and well, let's get right on to it. This book is about an orphan girl named Anne Shirley, who gets adopted by a man named Matthew and a, girl, and a woman named Marilla. These two are Basically, they, these two are related, they are brother and sister, and they wanted to adopt a boy, however, they accidentally adopt Anne. However, after, after being with Anne for a while, they grow fond of her and decide to adopt her properly. Now, Anne Shirley is no ordinary kid. She can imagine anything and entertain herself with anything while imagining. She looks at the tree and thinks the stories and... She looks at the beautiful lake and thinks about what she can name it. And basically, she's just a very imaginative, smart person. A person that, honestly, should become a writer. Because if you're imaginative, you write it down on paper. You show it to the world. You know, just, just some advice. And I found her very, very relatable. Just suck, sometimes sucking off and just imagining things and daydreaming. And, like, I do that all the time. Or did all the time. I still do, though. I still have at least an hour session of just imagining and daydreaming of books and ideas. And I just find that so relatable and it's so awesome. And the book, and anyway, it's basically about her life from being a kid to becoming like a young adult. And basically what she does is that she goes to the local school, the Avonlea school, where she is taught and she starts to excel. And then she makes a really good friend named Diana, and she also becomes pretty popular among the boys and the girls, and becomes a pretty popular kid. And and then basically she studies really, really hard to make the people who adopted her very proud. And then she she basically goes to Queen's Academy, which is a very good academy, and then even gets a scholarship of by of by which she could go to a really, really good college. So all in all, Anne is very smart, very determined, and if she says, I'm gonna do this, it's gonna happen. And honestly, I love people like that. Because if they say they can do it, they can do it. You can trust them, they're reliable, and they're awesome in general. And these kind of people are really hard to find. And just by the fact that I read a book about such a person was just really endearing to me. Now, in general, it's very, very well written. It got me really emotional. There is a couple examples. For example, the part where Matthew Cuthart, the, si the silent, kind of socially awkward man who loved Anne dearly, died. The part where Anne couldn't cry and then started to cry, that part really got me kind of emotional. Because, you see, I'm an experienced reader, if, if you can tell by the massive bookcase behind me. So usually when I'm reading a book, I don't get very emotional. However, that part really easily started to pull out emotions out of me. And that is quite a feat, even if I do say so myself. And it was the sadness, the grief, and all that. It just kind of beautifully came together. And I really, really was impressed by the level of writing that the book presented to me. It was a diff it was on a different level with some of the more recent books that I have read. Good fantasy books and good mystery books, however, aren't... The thing is, good plot doesn't mean good writing. The be best example of this would be The Da Vinci Code. Not good writing, but very good plot, so it keeps you going. However, here, it isn't the exciting plot that's keeping me going. It's the writing itself. It's gorgeous. It's like an art piece. It's it easily grabs my emotions and I was incredibly impressed. Another example of which I actually got pretty emotional, not a sad part by the way, this was the part where, uh, one of, in fact, one of the first couple uh, chapters of the book, where Miss Lind, who is very honest and straightforward with things, she basically calls Anne ugly. And Anne is actually very insecure about her looks. Now the thing is, um, uh, I think my 7th grade uh, homeroom teacher said it best, 
he said that it's okay to trash talk about things that a person is comfortable about. However, if you trash talk about something that a person feels insecure about, it's going to become a problem. So basically what happened in, well, in the story was that Anne's insecure about her looks and Miss Lyon basically decides to insult her looks. And Anne just bursts out with anger and logic. And the part, I could feel her frustration, I could feel the injustice, and I could feel her righteous anger, like, and I could relate to that righteous anger. And it was just amazingly well written. It really came to me, and that part was also really good. Now, another really relatable part, talking about relatable now, is the kind teacher, Miss Stacy, and the bad teacher, Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips basically punishes Anne for almost no reason. Once, for example, she was playing up with 12 boys and uh, 12 other people, and 12, pe 12, the 12 other people and Anne came late to the school. However, Mr. Phillips well, well, did say that he was going to punish tw punish all the people who came late. However, he was too lazy to, ju to punish all 12 people. Therefore, he decides to use Anne as a scapegoat and just punishes Anne. You have no idea how mad, mad she was. And honestly, I can totally relate. Teachers in my past, many, many of them were just a lot, a couple of them at least, at the very least, just had no interest in teaching whatsoever. And they were basically just there for the paycheck and the vacation, as my teacher best says it. And they punished people for no reason. And they weren't very just either. And they weren't good at teaching either. And Mr. Phillips was like the definition of that teacher that kind of talks about the same thing over and over again, makes it feel sleepy, and also unjustly punishes people. You know, the perfect example. That's very relatable for me. And that's also part of which the book really reached out to me. And of course, the part about the kind teacher, Miss Stacy, who really talks with her students, communicates with them, makes the lessons fun, and yet, and really, really focuses and she gets the best grades ever and it's amazing and like seriously i can really relate to that because Anne really doesn't do that well under mr phillips even though she does very well with her power with her actual abilities however miss stacy who is actually a good teacher comes out her abilities becomes to become even more better even with her natural talent she becomes more learned she becomes way smarter way faster so I feel, and I know the difference between a bad teacher and a good teacher, and I know, like, how much of a major difference that actually is, and it's really relatable how Mr. Phillips was, as I said, kind of a, kind of a shot at, and meanwhile, Miss Stacy's, well, this really, really nice teacher who teaches really, really well, really, really well. So all in all, in general, very well written very relatable plot all and in one word very heartwarming great book i would highly recommend it i'm very looking forward to reading some of the sequels i which i didn't know existed until two minutes ago and like always your book quester iron book quester thank you all for so thank you all so much for watching by the way i read the book in korean not that matters of course i'm i'm gonna read the rest in english though because english is my language Thank <laughs> you.